This is Tommy Watt for TCT Boxing in association with IFL TV and Fight Callout. I'm joined by Mark Bam Bam Flanagan. He's preparing for his world title fight against Demis Lebedev. How you doing, mate? Good, mate. Good having me. Yeah, no worries. It's been a, a long time since we caught up. It's um, yeah, we've probably had five or six fights I think since since yeah, then. Yeah, I think the last one was in Sydney, wasn't it? So it was a long time ago. So. Yeah, I think maybe the. Brown Dragon Air Press Media Day or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, maybe it's like Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, yeah, it was a while yeah. ago. Um, but yeah, a lot's, a lot's changed since then. You say fought for a, a regional uh, WBA title and then forced yourself into that position to uh, to fight Lebedev. Um, yeah, talk me through how training camp's gone and, and how have you been preparing for this one? Yeah, training, camp, training camp's been good. Um, you know, just getting uh, fitness was the main thing for me, getting as fit as I possibly could. Um, sparring is still kind of hard to get, uh, sort of trouble for a little bit. Um, you know, a couple of sparring parts you know, get injured just through just their, own, their own injuries. And, yeah. yeah, so the sparring, it has been good for the sparring I did have. Uh, fitness has been good, uh, strength work, everything's been right on point. Um, even this last week now, I'm kind of climatising for Russia, training late at night. And yeah. Just getting, trying to get myself ready in every single way I can to uh, to go to Russia and not be fatigued, just be ready and on point, ready to go. That's a, yeah. You, you mentioned sparring is not easy to, to come by. You've been, you've been travelling a bit for that, and yeah, yeah. Just southpaws are hard to get, but especially like shorter, stocky ones. Yeah. Um, our, our, our ideal one was Robbie Berridge, but he got cut in, uh, in Singapore, I think, oh, like in a week or two before sparring yeah. was starting. So, yeah, and he was like, he would have been yeah. ideal. But we got um, some sparring in about Faris uh, Chevalier, I think. Yeah. So. Very tricky. Got, got some, got tricky some it's, I mean, he's tricky. He's uh, quite an awkward, uh, evasive fighter. Um, Justice Hooney, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, world, world amateur champion. Yeah. yeah, but he's also he's like uh, six foot something and uh, hundred something kilos. It's the same thing. He's, he's tall and and then uh, but the closest thing we probably got to uh, sparring was uh, da, uh, was um, Blake Cabrera down in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah, even though he's a light heavyweight, he does walk around hot in the mid mid eighties. So, and, and he, he knows how to yeah. cut the nice angles and that. So, uh, bike your brothers a good help. And he's been at that level as well, you know. So he's yeah, been he able has, to give you advice. Yeah, I guess he's for, for a while, Tyler. I guess I uh, guess the Russian. So yeah, yeah. he knows what it's like to go on the big stage and, and be up against it. So um, yeah, I guess uh, we had a little chat as well and about how he handled that situation. And, yeah, we shared a bit of uh, knowledge and some good rounds, and yeah, it was a good experience. And is this your first trip overseas? Yeah, all together. I've never been overseas on holiday before. So. Wow. So yeah, stepping into the lion's den, time, mate. So, yeah, That's so it. Good. So, in, um, what are you expecting from, say, the trip to Russia and media day and everything like that? How are you, how are you expecting to deal with all that? And so it be new for yourself, I imagine. Yeah, it'll be new. I've, I've done a fair bit of media, so hopefully the media won't be different. Um, obviously, nerves are going to be there, but that's all part of the sport. Uh, I'm probably going to be more excited than anything, you know, like I've uh, never been overseas, so just to be overseas and around, surrounded by a different country, which is beautiful, it's going to be amazing, you know, and I don't think the atmosphere will bother me too much on the fight night, you know, because uh, even though they'll be going for him, you know, I can't stand what they say. So, like, you know, <laughs> just pretend it's going for you. Yeah, yeah, I'll just pretend they're going for me, you know, so. And they don't really cheer when someone hits, they kind of cheer the whole time the fight's yeah, going on. Yeah, so very passionate fans It's got to be an atmosphere that uh, I think hopefully will lift my level as well, and I think it should be good for them. Excellent, I know all of Australia will be uh, rooting to, uh, to bring another world champion back to, uh, back to these shores. So a big fight that we can't not mention uh, is the one that's coming up down the road in a few days' time, Jeff Horn against uh, Manny Pacquiao. What do you think about that fight and, and what it's done for Brisbane and Aussie boxing in, in general? Well, it's definitely um, made people uh, respect boxing a lot more. Uh, it's good to have such a fight this magnitude in Brisbane, mm. even in Australia, you know. Um, and there's a lot of people that weren't really boxing fans um, now. Uh, they're saying to notice boxing a lot more, they're saying to follow boxing a lot more. So it's definitely done a great thing for Australian boxing, just to, just to get it out there, you know, because uh, as everyone knows, like UFC MMA is kind of taking over mm. like, all the limelight. So, so what Jeff Horn's done for this fight is incredible. Um, I'm backing him all the way. I think it's going to be a great fight. Um, yeah, Manny Packers that same age as the guy I'm fighting, so hopefully, you know, the age will come into it, the young yeah. fellas will go over the top, and that's what I'm hoping. And yeah, but definitely good, good. Um, it's been good for boxing to uh, to have that. It's in the paper all the time. People don't know about boxing or reading about it all the time now. They're saying to take an interest, which is what we need. Maybe, yeah, so maybe it's the spark that Aussie boxing needed to, to grow. I think the, the talent's definitely there, but say it's the, the hunger from the fans that we need to, to build the sport. It's the fans out that really control the sport nonetheless. You know, you get your promoters and your fighters, but without the fans, without the interest of the general public, boxing will fizzle away and die. That's why you've seen that so big at the moment, because the fans are just crazy for it. Fans are everything, so we need, definitely need more fans. It's great for them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 
I know you don't want to look too far ahead because all of your thoughts and all of your mind will be on Denis Lebedev, but if you were to be successful, is there any kind of dream in mind? Would you like to bring a big fight to Australia like Horn has done, or would you like to go fight in Vegas? What, what sort of top well, of the list? Uh, there's a uh, WBA that's uh, what's, uh, sanctioned the Cuban, who's also who's the uh, who's a regular world champion in WBA, because he was a super champion, yeah. a regular champ, and they've ordered uh, the winner of me eleven to fight him within 120 days. And he's a Cuban based out of America, and has been based in America since his first pro fight. So I am feeling like if I can beat Lebedev, we might have a fight. It might even be in America because they'll probably win the bidding person yeah. for it. And um, so I'm like, if I can get it, if I can win this fight in Russia, we can unify the two WBA titles and maybe even have that fight in Vegas and in America somewhere. And, yeah, and then, then my dream mate just really starts, you know. And, uh, mate, you're going to be collecting a few stamps in that passport that you haven't oh, used before. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> well, I, I never dreamed I'd be where the spot I'm in now, and I know it seemed so far-fetched a couple of years ago, and now I'm here. It doesn't seem so far, far-fetched a dream of that big fight yeah. like that now, because, you know, I'm, I'm where I'm at now, and... That was crazy a couple of years ago, so who knows? That's it. For me. Yeah, I think we were talking about Commonwealth titles last time we yeah. were speaking. Yeah, lot, lot lower levels, you know, we are talking about. Um, to get such a shot like this and be successful is going to be going to be crazy for me. You know, I'm still pinching myself, and when I win this fight, it's going to be great to, to yeah, it'd be good to have a fight in America. I'd love to have a fight in Australia as well, and I'd have that belt, so I could I'd probably have a bit of pulling power to, uh, to have whatever kind of fight I want. Yeah. So that would definitely be great for, for me and for Australia. Yeah, I would say if, uh, if Horn can beat Pacquiao, I'm pretty sure the rematch clause says it would be in Australia as well, so maybe there's an undercard spot hey, there for you. Who knows, who knows. <laughs> so, well, look, I'll let you go off, so I know you've got training to do tonight and say final preparations for the fight. Best of luck, Mark, and we will catch up with you hopefully when you're back, probably over the phone as I'm not in Brisbane, but uh, so best of luck, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Mark.